Well over legal. And it's full as well. Fantastic. Look at that. What a big stud rainbow. Proper yabby trap. In this episode, we're going to look at the two main tropical species you can catch in New South Wales. We'll start off with Panellaris ornatus, the ornate rock lobster, which is one of the two really common tropical lobsters. There are two other species of tropical lobsters that you can get in New South Wales, but they're relatively rare. This crack is one of my favourite cracks. It's a double-ended crack. It's got a big open ledge on this end, and on the other end it's got a hole that you can get your arm in and pull craze out of. You won't have two ornatus sitting in it this day. I've gone in hard and grabbed the first one because he uh, couldn't get back quickly enough. It's a big ornatus. Never get him in that hole. It's always Easter. My little wobby that bit me is still in there. Yeah, that's a good start. Very nice. Beautiful colours on him. There was another ornatus in this crack, as you can see, and he's backed up towards the other hole. So I've gone down to have a quick look through the ledge without sticking my hand in to suss out the situation. And unusually, this ornatus has turned upside down and he's hanging on the ceiling, but he's ready to make a break out the back door. So first off, have a good look through the ledge, make your plan, don't just rush in. And then I've gone over to the uh, back door because I've seen that he's right up close to that. And... Um, Fortunately, because he's upside down, he can't actually see me and his antennas are still inside the crack so he can't really feel me. So I had a great chance to just grab the horn straight through this hole. That noise you can hear is the lobster rubbing his horns against his head and that makes that distinctive squeaking noise. It can be very useful for attracting fish, especially things like coral trout or even snapper. Gotcha. Yeah, a little bit tricky. A pair of them out of that same hole. Very, very rare. Anyway, let's be back a little bit of tropical. Ornatus are much more likely to be out in the open or at the front of the cracks. They're a much peakier lobster than the eastern rock lobster. They'll often turn around and try to bolt back their swimming speed. You see this guy out in the open, he's just turning and gone. So I've grabbed the guy that it's much easier to get to pin back in the rocks and take him out. So usually two-handed approach is better with these um, ornatus because they'll always try to skittle one way or the other instead of just backing up into the crack like the eastern rock lobster tends to do. Going back down in the same spot, you'll see another little ornatus and he watches me like a hawk and as soon as he thinks he's in trouble, off he goes. They're very, very quick and hard to grab in the open like this. This is a very common scenario with Ornatus. He sees you coming and just turns sideways and instantly does a bolt. Um, always worth chasing them if you've got the breath hold. It's not too deep, never push yourself too hard, but if you've got a chance to chase them, they'll usually pull up somewhere to uh, get their second wind and give you a chance to grab them and then it's two hands straight down on them. This guy was a bit silly, he turned around and come back to me, but uh, normally they'll just keep going. There's no size limit on Ornatus in New South Wales. However, if you want to have lobsters for the future, it's always a good idea to let the smaller models go. I was pretty lucky to get this guy in a big open crack like that with the obstruction in the front. He's got heaps of room to turn around and do the bolt, so perhaps his youth uh, and to his downfall, but anyway, uh, you never know, lobsters will behave how they're going to behave. This Ornalis is behaving much more like an eastern rock lobster and backing up as hard as he can into the ledge. You can see he's got nowhere to go, so relatively easy capture. Again, going with two hands is the safest, round the horns, pull him straight out, and uh, you've got yourself a lobster. Of course, always check for eggs. 
on these guys, especially later in the season, they, so many of the females will have eggs on them, and they'll have eggs on them in a much smaller size than the eastern rock lobster. So if you have a female lobster, always check it for eggs. Here's a classic diving situation. Ian's found a nice lobster for me to film while he captures it. He's put the gun down to mark the spot to make sure he knows exactly where it is. And with the Ornatus, don't put the gun too close to them because if it rattles around at all or if they get a good look at it, you can make them turn around and bolt out of the hole. Anyhow, there's Ian textbook what method to catch it. And a hand either side, stop the lobster from coming forward and turning and bolting. And either side he goes, the lobster's going to run into your hand. So. Um, yeah, that's the way to do it. Hold on to them firmly and you won't lose that lobster. And always bring a catch bag. Nice work. Yeah, that's a good size, better than the one I just got. You want me to put him in your bag? Oh, no, you have the bag. <laughs> Here's another classic double-handed grab, definitely the best technique for these Ornatus. In summary, Ornatus are quick, they're a very wary lobster, they're quite willing to turn around and bolt out of the cave if they have half a chance. A two-handed grab is the best approach. You can catch Ornatus in New South Wales from pretty much Port Stephens north, but they're much more common from South West Rocks north. And of course, right the way through Queensland, the top end of Australia. The next species we're going to look at is Panolyris longipes. Uh, it doesn't really have a common name, we just call them longipes. Um, they're a very distinct purple colour, they've got some very bright purple flashes on the inside of the horns. Um, they've got very long legs as well. These are definitely the most relaxed of all the lobster species. They'll just sit there quite often like this one, rubbing the antenna over the camera, trying to work out what's going on, really not making any attempt to escape. It's a great sort of lobster to learn on when you're first starting out. The main issue you have with these lobsters is the antennas are quite abrasive and will catch on your gloves. So sometimes you go to grab the horns, but you'll actually get hung up on the antennas, which is no good because they'll break like all lobster species. These guys tend to behave more like an eastern rock lobster in that they'll back up in the cracks. Occasionally they'll try to bolt, but much, much less frequently than the Ornatus. Um, they're probably the easiest lobster to catch. They're uh, very sharp on the horns and, and uh, easy to get a good grip with these type of cotton gloves. Mm -hmm. Nice longer piece. Very docile one, they don't always come that easy. Out of one of my favorite cracks. You can see from this next bit of footage that the longer peas are often very, very docile, not really overly afraid of you if you haven't touched them. This guy very slowly backs up a little bit into the crack and it's quite easy to do a grab on the horn. This is one prey, especially if you can see that they can get back a long way out of reach. And you really should have a snatch and grab and try to get hold of the horn because chances are it's not going to zip off too quickly. Try that with an Ornatus, you'll almost always end in failure. But with the longer peas, you can certainly get away with it. Even when it comes to bagging up this cray, you can see that it really doesn't do much kicking. Every now and then they'll give you a little kick, but they're pretty well behaved most of the time. The biggest problem with the longer peas is getting the legs into the bag because they've got such long legs, but fortunately, because they don't usually put up too much of a struggle, they're pretty easy to get in. Those legs, by the way, are their most awesome snapper burly because the snapper will be attracted to it, but there's no way they'll get one of those legs down in one hit. Check out my video on how to spear big Aussie snapper if you want to learn how to use this lobster leg technique. There's no size limit on the longer piece lobsters either, just a bag limit of two in New South Wales combined with the Ornatus. But uh, as with everything, it's good to let the little ones go so you've got lobsters for the future.
bit of yoga, no? Yeah, pretty light to let him go though. Just put the camera under water. Here's a good example of just going for the grab on one horn. Um, works pretty well with a longer piece. Most of the other lobsters uh, can be a bit of an issue. If you do grab them by one horn, as soon as you get the chance, get your other hand onto the lobster and get a really good grip because they can kick out. Notice the bright blue base on the horns when they put their horns down. They've got really some spectacular colours on these lobsters and quite a bit of variety on them. The only escape for this longer piece was to go to my right into that deeper ledge so you get your hand straight in, pin him up against the wall and then uh, you can take your time to pull him out because you can't go anywhere. Always assess the situation, don't just go in for the smash and grab unless you absolutely have to. For this capture I had to go in with one hand I slid it along the bottom and underneath the antennas and around the horns because there was no room above for him to jump up. Um, ideally you would have used two hands but unfortunately I had the camera in my left hand so I was pretty much committed for a right handed grab. Anyway it all worked out okay. This longer piece was going to do the bolt down the crack. I could see where he was going to go. I get my left arm in and make sure I block it as soon as I see him pivot like that. And then you use the other hand to chase him down towards that so that he runs into your arm, can't go anywhere. And then take your time, get a good hold of the lobster, around the horns, around the head, just take him back to the surface. When you can't win them all, this longer piece was in a huge cave. Not only that, he had a really big wobby gong in there with him. Sometimes you just got to look and move on and try for the next one.